The Advent officers seem more capable than the grunts. We're not sure whether to chalk it up to training or stricter mind control. Hi guys, welcome back to Switch Up, and it's that time again. Hang on, is it the same day? My goodness. Right, we're going to look at XCOM 2 next, and as a massive fan of the XCOM series from way back from Enemy Unknown to Terror from the Deep, if anyone actually played that one, and now we have XCOM 2 finally on the Nintendo Switch after the multitude of clones that have arrived that just haven't quite scratched the itch. The XCOM itch. <laughs> So, we're going to look at the performance, the controls, all the options. Uh, yeah, this isn't quite Bioshock. But is it still worth picking up? And how does it compare to the, let's be honest, not perfect Xbox and PlayStation versions? Is the performance as sharp as my shooting? Oof. Well, actually, if it's as sharp as my shooting, I've yeah, missed every time, so that doesn't bode well. Let's find Frame out. Dry. Straight off the bat, as you'll see on the screen, you're getting the full experience here, including the base XCOM 2 game, as well as the War of the Chosen, and you can select these from the get-go based on which experience you wish to play. There are numerous other small control tweaks, nice little ones like being able to tie the language of the characters to their nationality, tweak and change every soldier's name so that you can deck them out as your family like I always used to do and then be really upset as they... <laughs> as they invariably perished. The control of the character is done with the left stick. This acts as a mouse of sorts, while the right acts as a panning tool to allow you to pan over the entire map. Using the D-pad up and down, you can change the scale so you can move yourself to higher levels, allowing you to climb ladders, go onto rooftops, and jump down from buildings. Other than that, the controls are really nice and simple, and I like the addition with XCOM 2 of being able to press the Y button to simply reload rather than having to select it directly. If you need to rotate the camera, you can do this with the right and left D-pad buttons. From a control standpoint, they've done a good job with this port and it feels and controls nicely, albeit never as good as a mouse and keyboard. But yeah, hats off for controls. Where things get much more interesting then, is with the performance. Now in terms of the resolution, that's the first thing I want to look at. This is definitely not native resolution. It's tingling my 540p senses for sure and it may have some dynamic resolution scaling. Now, the real issue for me at the moment is that although it targets a 30 frames per second frame rate, this fluctuates quite wildly from time to time, much, as I said, like the Xbox version did as well. Unlike, however, a game like Bioshock, you don't notice so much of this in a strategy title. It's just the nature of the beast but I definitely do notice it when I'm looking out for it. The game may hitch and stall from time to time and then go back to being nice and smooth. As you can see from that frame graph, there are a few little dips as well and, and they might represent either screen tears or just little stutters that the player can see with their eye, but it really picks up on there. textures of the entire game are not great. They're not great. They're okay, but they're certainly not great. Shadow maps are unbelievably low at times. Just check out these little bad boys. This is what I was talking about with Bioshock. It's what I was worried about over there, but here, my goodness. Some of these shadow maps are either so low or they're just missing altogether. Other issues that I've noticed are vehicles or objects just materializing into the game, light maps not being active and suddenly springing into life, and flickering of entire textures or static items. It's not sounding great, is it? But it isn't actually as bad as that sounds when you're actually playing the game. What you've essentially got here is the PC version on as low as it could possibly go, and then some, which is what's keeping the performance, as you can probably tell, for the most part, okay. I wouldn't say it's a game that needs to look amazing, but it could certainly look a touch better to me. Things like the destructibility of the world are one of the most impressive features on the PC version. Here, when you shoot something, you see a flash and a, a spark, but nothing Nothing else happens, it's just kind of gone. Thankfully character animations carried over really well and the little introductory animations when new enemies enter an area give the game a lot of life and character that past XCOM titles just didn't have. The 
Advent officers seem more capable than the grunts. So yeah, the textures aren't great. The models are okay. They work well enough. The destructibility is here to some degree, but it's not really up to the levels of other systems. But you know what? It's XCOM and it still plays just the same as I remember it. Load times are quite long. There's no two ways about it. These are the longest load times of the three titles I've looked at so far today, ranging from 40 seconds, and then you have the pseudo I've actually loaded, but I've not yet loaded section when you're on your ship. So it can go up to about a minute long, which again, when each of the rounds takes around 20 or can take 30 minutes, it's not again, such a huge deal breaker. The fact of the matter is you've got the whole of the XCOM 2, as well as the expansion packs here and it's in the palm of your hand what i will say is in handheld mode although it won't let me capture a video weirdly this is one of those scenarios where i prefer it in this mode the small screen makes everything look much crisper and strangely the shadows actually look higher resolution i'm not really sure what's going on there anti-aliasing in both docked and handheld is a mixed bag there are some surfaces that have jaggy edges and then there are some that look fine i'm not gonna lie i'm not surprised that of the three titles this is the one that has a few issues but you know what are my impressions of the game and that will be based on the performance as well it's XCOM 2 basically i used to play this on a potato pc and i had just as much fun it feels like XCOM 2 it plays like XCOM 2 there are a few stutters here and there and you know if that holds you back from enjoying it then that's gonna hold you back from enjoying it but for me, I kind of expect it with this type of game and more so on a Nintendo Switch. The fact of the matter is for the most part it's 30 FPS and then every now and then it just looks like an absolute dog's dinner for a few seconds. Hopefully they can improve it with a patch but the gameplay, the core experience is good. The controls are very well implemented. It is a shame that there isn't touch screen in handheld. That's always an odd one for me in these strategy games. It should be there. A bit like Gyro with Bioshock really. But the core XCOM experience feels great. As I say, you'll be naming your different troops, carrying out numerous memorial services after they die, and implementing strategies that eventually don't end up in your rapid demise. Now what I really like about number two, that perhaps the first title didn't do as much, is it brings back so much of the strategy. So you've got your researching, which yes, it was there in the first remake, but I prefer the implementation here in 2. It all just feels much more slick. Like sending your crew out to investigate different things, upgrading their gear, changing their loadouts, and gradually building your force into a group of super soldiers that just, well, can't die. That's what this game's all about. And it's worth having that in the palm of your hand, but I would suggest potentially waiting for some patches unless you're desperate to get it right now. It's really nice to have XCOM finally on the Switch. It would have been nice perhaps if they'd have given it a little bit more makeup, but but it's still a good day. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this one. Have I been overly harsh on it? I don't think I have really. I think it speaks for itself, doesn't it? Please do go and check out my Bioshock 1 and 2 performance reviews. The link will be down in the top comment. They are slightly different to this in terms of performance. And with all of that said, I'm going to start cracking on with Borderlands. Ah, uh, yeah, it's been a long day, hasn't it? Is it the same day? No, it's not. Please do leave comments down below. I'm reading them all at the moment because it's keeping me awake. And do not worry, I am going to get a good sleep after this one. Oh, and we do have our Geotech giveaway at the moment, so if you want to take part in that, just read the community post. As always, a big thanks to our patrons who support us each and every month. And with that said, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. Cheers.